your audience now has an open channel to speak back to you, to create content. Many networks are using user-generated content. You know, Jane, you mentioned even grabbing the video, you know, how the network is grabbing video from all around the Middle East. So in terms of the community and maybe ways that the community could better utilize these platforms to speak back to the media, to talk to networks like CNN, to say, here are stories that we think should be told, or voicing, uh, participating in stories that are already being told. Well, one of the things that I suggest to uh, all organizations is I have a little flip cam in my purse that I carry around, and you can literally record something, put it in your computer, and send it within a, a couple of minutes. So uh, if there's something that you see that you don't like on TV, record a response and put it in an email and send out a news release to everybody. You can do a news release for 200 bucks or less and you can, you can respond. I, again, I say it's a rapid response that's necessary because what I see with a lot of different organizations and I'm involved in a lot of different movements is that people get upset about something First thing they do, they call their friends who already agree with them. Okay, isn't that terrible? Okay, meanwhile, the clock's ticking, tick, tick, tick. By the time you talk to all your friends about how terrible it is, the news cycle has gone by. So instead of responding that way, I hate preaching the converted. That's one thing that we, many movements do a little too much, is take all that energy that you're, talk, that you're using to talk to each other and send it out and direct it at the media to get to the people who said whatever it is that got you upset in the first place. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure this addresses your question, but I, you know, the way we're using some of these social media tools is, you know, from a business perspective, and how do we get our business to be conti to continue to grow? I mean, we are using um, we have live blog parties for our for our shows. So while you're watching RuPaul's Drag Race, you're actually blogging with all the other fans of RuPaul. Uh, and it keeps people more engaged, you know, and it, and it allows them to have their voices heard and comment on what people are wearing and dissing this or that. And we found that it really engages our audience in a way that, um, that keeps them more connected to us. And we're always looking for ways to do that. The other thing that we do is that, you know, it's very, you know, television networks and companies always have suggestion boxes or you can email if you've got a complaint. We've sort of taken that to a different level where we actually have a group at Logo who respond on Twitter as themselves. And so if somebody tweets that they hate something or they don't like it, we will actually respond directly to them and engage them in a conversation where in the past was like, send them the standard letter that says, thank you for your letter, you know, we have a nice day. We appreciate your time. Thank you very um, much for writing. Because I think, the, I think with these new, with, with social media now, there is an expectation of having real dialogue and having authentic conversations. And instead of running away from it, we said, let's just take it on. So we have this group at Logo called the Twitter Bunch. And every week, somebody takes on the, the responsibility of, of being the tweeter. And I think people are surprised that we're actually really responding. And it's been very helpful to keep our audience engaged and connected. OK, so also from, uh, from Ryan Young, again in Twitter. What direction should the LGBT media take in adding transgendered people to the forefront of the movement? Well, I think that that's very important. And um, I've always believed that discrimination has nothing to do with um, your uh, race, creed, color, sexual orientation. It's a mindset. And everybody's mindset needs improvement. And so we have to make sure that we, as a community, are completely supportive of every segment of our community, 100%, and that there's no um, differentiation between uh, any group, or any group is one is more important than the other. And uh, I, I feel that that's something that we, we should really work on. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. And, and we, cover, we, we ensure that if we're truly reflecting all of our stories, you know, we've had documentaries that have been incredibly powerful as people are transitioning. We've had reality shows, you know, um, that 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 feature transgendered um, cast. So, you know, the way we look at it is, we just want to put honest, true stories out there that 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 tell that part of that that reflect that part of our our, our community. I think, ladies, as a part as your parting thoughts, when you think about where we go from here. 
with the media and with regards to the LGBT community, how the community is represented in both fictional and non-fictional aspects. What's next? What are the next big thresholds that we need to cross where you know, one day it's not an issue? You know, one day we are just looking at more diversity in the stories and more diversity in the people who are telling the stories. Well, I personally would like to see a same-sex dancing with the stars. That would be, that would be pretty, pretty good. And that, that's the kind of thing that I would like to see is like where you, a same-sex couple coming up to the Oscars and being a presenter. Um, all these areas where we haven't really filled in the blanks yet and where people would actually go, oh, really today? Oh, same-sex dancing with the stars, where it would just be accepted as, okay, yeah, and then, then there's a same-sex couple on Dancing with the Stars, too. And there's a same-sex couple presenting at the Oscars. And so just throughout all of society, all the layers, all the institutions, all the events, we're there and we're visible. That's, that's my dream for it. Um, I'm not going to personally try to get on Dancing with the Stars because I don't know how to dance and I, I'm not qualified. Uh, but uh, that's that so, that, 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 true. It hasn't stopped. <laughs> that's true. Uh, but but seriously, that's my dream. Is sometimes I turn on the TV and I I say, where are we? Where are we in the, that TV commercial? Where are we in that reality show? Um, uh, is there, a, I know there was the um, real life L word, but is there a same sex uh, reality show right now? You would probably know better than I, on mainstream television? I mean. Well, there are many gay characters reflected on TV, uh, in mainstream TV than ever before. So a show like Glee is yes. a phenomenal show, or Modern Family, uh, where it's just part of the story. It's not the primary focus. And it's really, I think, the way we're living our lives. So I'm glad they're reflecting it that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, the way I would answer the question is sort of the, in addition to what you're saying, it's funny that you chose TV and reality, and I'm going to choose politics, mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> uh, I, I think when we could have an out LGBT Supreme Court justice, when we can have an out member of the president's cabinet um, who is very, very senior, and ultimately, you know, someone holding the highest office in the land, we will have arrived. Yeah. That's a pretty I'll good way that. to end it. <laughs> well, with that, I want to thank Jane Villette Nicole, as well as Lisa Sherman, for the time today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great question.